It seems often the case that a company's last product ends up being its best. With Sega, it was the Dreamcast, with Pontiac, it was the G8, and with Minolta, it was arguably the Maxim 9. Released in 1999, the Maxim 9 was Minolta's final no-holds-barred attempt at creating a truly professional 35mm SLR. And while it wasn't the commercial success the company had hoped for, it made for quite the swan song. The spec sheet is hit after hit. A virtually indestructible all-metal body coated in UV-hardened plastic that is weather-sealed, the fastest shutter ever made to date, topping out at 1 12,000th of a second, 5.5 FPS burst shooting built in, and a 14-segment TTL light meter. In case you couldn't tell by now, this is pretty much my endgame film camera, and I absolutely love it. The pop-up flash is a nice touch, too. The one brown spot on this camera is that it uses Minolta's proprietary hot shoe mount, which requires an adapter for all standard flashes. Ergonomically, this camera is pretty good too. Don't get me wrong, it's massive, but the buttons and dials are all well placed and right at hand, and it's clear some thought actually went into it. For power, this camera takes two CR123A lithium batteries. They're still readily available on sites like Amazon, and the pair in my camera have been going strong for over a year now. If you'd rather something more standard, Minolta made a vertical grip that would let you power the camera with four double A's, but I don't have one, and the thought of adding even more mass to the camera isn't very appealing. Up top, we have a surprisingly modern complement of controls, featuring a PASM dial and an exposure compensation dial, as well as an LCD screen that shows the current exposure settings, frames remaining, and battery level. Something really cool is that, much like a Swiss watch, both dials have luminous elements, and the LCD has a front light that you can activate to make shooting at night much easier. But you could have the best camera in the world, and it wouldn't really matter if you didn't have some decent glass. Thankfully, Minolta's A-mount is up to the task. With some rare exceptions, most Maxim 9s do not support newer SSM lenses, but Screwdrive A-mount glass is no slouch and available for very reasonable prices these days. One of my favorites is this Tamron SPLD 28-105mm f2.8 spherical. It rarely ever leaves the camera body. It is a superbly versatile lens. If portraits and macros are more your thing, perhaps Sigma's 100mm f2.8 macro lens is for you. It is tack sharp and capable of one-to-one -one macro shots. This is the lens I've used the least on the Maxim, but it works great adapted to my modern Fujifilm mirrorless. The early 2000s were really the beginning of third-party lenses offering serious competition. Gone were the days of companies like Tamron and Sigma being banished to the budget sector due to their poor image quality. In many cases, their offerings were just as competent as Minolta's first-party lenses. But not in every case. This is, perhaps, one of the coolest lenses ever made. It's the Minolta 500mm f8 autofocus reflex lens. It is the only autofocus reflex lens ever made, and one of the sharpest, too. Rather than using glass elements to focus the light, it uses a series of mirrors inside, enabling a very long focal length in a very lightweight, compact lens. Surprisingly, the autofocus performance of both the reflex lens and others is actually pretty good in my experience. It uses a surprisingly modern CCD-based through-the-lens phase detect system with three main autofocus points, and it is spot on 99% of the time, even with shallower depths of field. And I really couldn't ask for more on a film camera. Being so modern, it can of course read DX coding and has contacts for an optional data back that would have let you export your EXIF data to a smart media memory card. Remember, at this point in time, digitizing film was incredibly commonplace, but digital cameras were not. The Maxim 9 is a relic from the brief, brief period where personal computers and the internet were commonplace, but digital cameras weren't. Other standout features include data recall, which shows you the shutter speed and aperture for each shot of the last three rolls, which comes in very handy with digitizing, and perhaps my favorite feature of all, mid-roll reload. This lets you switch out film stocks midway through shooting a roll, then resume from where you left off whenever you want. I cannot stress how amazing this feature is. I use it all the time. 
if the sun is going down quickly, I can swap out my Ektar 100 for a roll of Portra 800, shoot half the roll, then pick up where I left off with the Ektar the next day. It is so nice. To conclude, the Maxim 9 is, for me at least, as close to perfect as a film camera can be. I bought my copy and its accompanying lenses from the estate of a former Nat Geo photographer, and they will be with me for the foreseeable future. It looks great, it works well, it's packed with usable features, and in the right hands, it can make some great pictures. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit like, get subscribed, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And I will see you guys in the next one.